Hello everyone, Lewis here, and today we'll be reviewing Zen Sets, which was created by Sergey and his team. This add-on was released in the start of November, and I have been using it for one week now. Uh, it's been quite interesting. The model feature here today uh, was made by this user on Sketchfab and is licensed under Creative Commons. So let's start the add-on review. Overall, the total size of this add-on is 70 kilobytes, which is very light and loads super fast. With the addition of proprietary images and branding assets that are referenced within it, the code structure is well written and respects the base Blender API without any external calls or weird workarounds. The hotkey defaults are not intrusive, so I highly appreciate their consideration here. As always, you can remap them depending on how crucial this feature set may be for your workflow, with exception of only one catch, but I will get there. There is also a compact mode, which shrinks your buttons to make the UI a little bit more slimmer on the end panel. And there is also a link for documentation on their site in case you want to learn from there. You can access it uh, only on edit mode. So you enter edit mode, go to the end panel, and there, there you have it, Zen sets. It's quite straightforward. So basically you have sets and you have parts. The difference between them is that parts uh, can have inclusions within themselves uh, in, in sets can't. So you can have sets uh, inside sets per se, but uh, overall you can kind of segment your selections, save them and realize your selections uh, anytime you want. So it gets stored similar to the stashing system on Mesh Machine for those that are familiar with that. Uh, it also segments between uh, face, edge and vertex selections. So that's good. And also has some extra uh, buttons and feature sets, but I will talk more about that later. I find there are some strange Z fighting artifacts happening when previewing face selections, which I believe may be related to how they're rendering it on the viewport. The tool section is very self-explanatory and I won't be diving into it, but you can basically split into objects and generate random materials to bake ID maps later. One thing that I found is that also is that sometimes edge selections can have a more shy appearance depending on your viewport matcap and shading mode. Uh, however, they are indeed preserved when a, let's say, subdivision modifier is applied, which is very, very uh, thumbs up from me. Another very important uh, and curious thing that distinguish this aside from, let's say, uh, uh, vertex groups is that selections are indeed preserved uh, after change in the topology. So like uh, auto merging vertices and things like that, the main pie menu can be accessed by holding Ctrl Alt D and it has the display button on the bottom row. Once that is activated, uh, you can, let's say, hold Ctrl Shift wheel up or wheel down to cycle through set types. And if you hold Ctrl wheel up and down, you cycle between the sets within that type. Now, don't take me wrong, I, I think this implementation is interesting and it's very similar to how ZBrush does it. But the problem here is that you really can't uh, change these uh, hotkeys within the settings menu. Lots of experienced users, including myself, really like having control mouse wheel up and down to shrink and grow selections. So it's personally conflicting with that, uh, that assignment and uh, that can possibly be fixed by developers in the future. When we talk about selections, 
it's important to say they're a very broad subject and the main Blender core developers already have plans for updating and now with the Geometry Nodes project alongside everything nodes. Maybe the functionality between object and edit mode becomes even more blurred as add-ons and tools evolve. However, they are still very distinctive and important areas. I believe the future is add-ons not, uh, not only solving technical problems, but also creative ones. Maybe I'm getting out of scope, but one day I'll be interested in features like assigning specific materials based on object density, size, or even distribute values to assist in composition uh, with the with selections per se. Back in 2.79, we had a add-on that I reviewed two years ago by Benjamin Sounder, uh, and that was discontinued, but uh, it was it basically allowed for reviewing UV areas within the model just by hovering over the islands. And that was very interesting. Like that's the, the stuff that we need Blender to do more and to really assist in becoming a, uh, a tool for not only experienced users, but basic users alike. So for my verdict, Again, if you both love Moto selection types, if you're coming from Moto and you, you also like ZBrush, Polygroups, Nostalgia, the price of 90 bucks might suit your needs. Just stay aware the viewport can become very rainbow in nature and that can be a double-edged sword sometimes. I'd love to see this improved up on, on the future and I see it as a good complement to Zen UVs. So far, it delivers what it promises and I'll be looking forward to new releases. Uh, so, is this add-on valuable for you? Let me know down in the comments. Clarifying that the links on the description are of affiliate nature, so they help offsetting my production costs and keeping this channel alive. If you also want to support me checking out my Gunroad store, I have cool Blender themes there, and talking directly to me uh, via Twitter. So yeah, that's it for today. I'm signing out until next time. Bye.